In tutorial 4 we will cover chapter 6 which is counting. And the reason why we need to study counting in chapter 6 because one of the topics we will cover in discrete mathematics is uh, probability theory and probability theory, at least discrete probability, uh, depends on counting principles. So in chapter 6 we will study counting and then in the next tutorial we will cover chapter 7 which is probability theory. In this chapter we will study the basics of counting and we will study many formulas to uh, yeah, enable us to count and one of the things we will do toward the end of the chapters we will see how we can count permutations and combinations. The rules that we will cover we will start uh, by studying the product rule, then the sum rule, the subtraction rule, the division rule, and then we will look at three diagrams. Three diagrams are used also in counting. And the last two topics we will study permutations and combinations. The product rule states that if you have a procedure that can be broken down into a sequence of two tasks if there is n one ways to do the first task and n two ways to do the second task then there are n one times n two ways to do the procedure now many of those rules that we will study if you just read the rule it may not be very clear how to use it but an, as an example we will see an example for each rule that will make the rule very clear you know, how to apply the rule how to use it so here is an example to uh, explain the product rule uh, we want to know how many bit strings of length 7 are there uh, of course just to remind you a bit string is a, str uh, a number a string a sequence of numbers uh, that uses only two digits, either 0 or 1. Now, uh, since there is seven, uh, yeah, seven slots to fill, each choice, there is on two choices, yeah, either 0 or 1, so we multiply 2 by itself seven times, because there is the length of the uh, bit string is 7, so each digit is either 0 or 1, that means there is two ways to choose the digits. Uh, multiply 2 by itself 7 times, you get 2 to the 7 or 128. The product rule, uh, this is another example uh, of using the product rule. How many different license plates can be made if each plate contains a sequence of three uppercase English letters followed by three digits. Yeah, there is six slots to fill. The first three slots are uh, uppercase English letters. Then uh, the next three slots are three digits. Uh, here, of course, uh, the first three lots, the three slots are uh, letters, uh, uppercase letters, so there is 26 choice for each of these slots. By the first th three slots you multiply 26 times 26 times 26. Uh, the next three slots are numbers, so the choices are between 0 and 9, and 10 choices. So the next three slots are 10 times 10 times 10. Uh, the uh, results of multiplying these numbers is 17,576,000 different possible license plates. Again, the reason why we do this, we are applying the product rule. We have six slots to fill. The first three are letters, so there's 26 choices for each position. The next three are numbers, so there's 10 choices from 0 to 9. Uh, applying the product rule, multiplying these numbers, 
give us the total number of possible license plates. Next, we want to see how to count functions. Uh, first, we'd like to count how many functions are there from a set with m elements to a set with n elements. Uh, we know the function, uh, just to remind you of the definition of a function, uh, a function represents a choice for each element in the domain. There must be a unique element in the codomain. Uh, there is m elements in the domain, uh, and for each one of these elements there is n choices, because the codomain has n elements, so you multiply n by itself m times, uh, this is applying the product rule, and you multiply n by itself m times, you get n to the m. That's how many functions from a set with m elements to a set with n elements. Now if you add the condition uh, that the function is one-to-one, -one, if you only want to count the one-to-one -one, uh, functions, that changes uh, the counting. Uh, because uh, for the first element, for example, you have n choices. Uh, for the second element, you can choose any elements except the one you selected in the first time. And you, you cannot repeat. The function has to be one-to-one. -one. So uh, every step, once you select an element, you cannot select it again. Uh, the number of choices uh, are, uh, there is n uh, n ways to select or to assign uh, an image for the first element, A1, n minus 1 ways to uh, assign an image for A2. Every time, every step, you have uh, one less elements to uh, select. Now the last element in the domain, that you have n minus m plus 1 ways to select an image, okay, then the number of possible, yeah, you applying the product rule, the number of possible functions is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. The last number is n minus m plus 1. That's how many functions, one-to-one -one functions, from a set of n elements to a set of m elements. In the next example, we would like to count uh, telephone uh, number. Uh, yani we have a uh, telephone numbering plan, and we would like to count how many different possible telephone numbers we can get. Uh, this is called the North American Numbering Plan, NAMP. Uh, the telephone number must be 10 digits, and yani we have 10 slots to fill. The first three digits is called the area code. The next three digits are uh, is called the office code, and then the final four digits is called station code. So again, the first three digits is the area code. The next three digits is the office code. The final four digits is the station code. Uh, of course, there are restrictions which we have to take into account when we are. Uh, applying the product rule. Uh, we will let x be the digits from 0 to 9, so x has 10 possible values. n denotes the digits from 2 to 9, so we have 8 possible numbers, and y denotes the digits that's either 0 or 1, so you have two choices for y. Uh, we have two different plans. The old plan, which was used in the early 60s, has the format NYX for the area code, NNX for the office code, and XXXX for the station code. The new plan has a format NXX, NXX, and then XXXX. But we want to know how many different telephone numbers are possible under the old plan and also under the new plan. So we'll start counting. Uh, let's look at area codes, which is in the format NYX. There is n possible choices. Uh, there is eight possible choices for n, two choices for y, 
and 10 choices for uh, x uh, using the product rule multiply these numbers there's 160 area codes with the format nyx for the other format the nxx uh, n there's eight choices for n 10 choices for x and uh, x is repeated there's 10 choices for x uh, this is the third uh, digits uh, the product here is 800 there's 800 different area codes with the format NXX. Uh, now we want to count the office codes. The format is NNX, so uh, the number of possible office codes under this uh, format is 8 times 8 times 10 or 640 office codes. Uh, the uh, station codes in both the old and new plans are is X times X times X times X. So the possible number of station codes is equal to the product of 10. Uh, we multiply 10 by itself four times. We get 10,000 station codes. Uh, and the format is X, 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 X. Now we are ready to count the number of telephone numbers in both plans. Uh, the old plan. Uh, we have the, and the format is uh, uh, NYX. There was 160 possible choices for uh, the area code. And then NNX, which is the office code, there's 640 possible selections. And then the uh, XXX, there's 10,000 uh, different uh, ways to select that digit. Uh, the product, applying the product r rule, uh, we have uh, 1 billion, 24 million possible telephone numbers under the old plan. Now for the new plan, the format is NXX, NXX, and then XXXX. For the uh, number of uh, possible telephone numbers, on the area code, there's 800 choices. Uh, which is NXX times uh, the office code there's also 800 choices NXX times the station code and there was 10,000 possible selections where the product here uh, will give us uh, 6 billion 400 million different telephone numbers uh, next we want to uh, see how we can count subsets of a finite set and yani how many possible subset uh, you can uh, yani form from a finite set uh, we will uh, we saw that rule before uh, we want to see now how to count using the counting principle uh, we know uh, if you have a set s uh, the cardinality uh, of the set is the number of elements uh, we write it as uh, yani we use uh, absolute value uh, bars, but that actually denotes the cardinality of S, or how many elements are in S. Uh, we already know that there is 2 raised to the power, which is uh, the cardinality of S, or the number of elements of S. Uh, we want to see why this is true, yani why this formula works. That gives us a number of subsets of the finite set S. Uh, we know uh, when the elements of S are listed in arbitrary order, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the subsets of S and the bit string of length, which is equal to the cardinality of S. Uh, now, the ith elements in the subset, the bit string has either 1 uh, in the ith position and 0 otherwise, yani for any elements any subset, you yani start w w by listing all the uh, elements of S. Now, any subset, you can go through each element of S. Either it is in the set, so use 1, or it is not in the set, so use 0. Uh, uh, we already covered an example like that. Uh, yani th that's how many, uh, yani for each subset can be represented by... Uh, a bit string uh, in the way that we just explained. Okay, then the number of subsets 
uh, of uh, the set S is equal to the number of bit strings that have length equal to the cardinality of S. And therefore, how many bit strings uh, of that length? There is 2 raised to the power equal to the cardinality of S. That's how many bit strings there are of length equal to the cardinality of S. And therefore, there's uh, 2 uh, raised to the power, uh, which is equal to the cardinality of S. That's how many subsets there is uh, of the set S. Uh, next application of the product rule uh, is we want to count the number of elements in the Cartesian product of sets. Uh, we have a sequence of finite sets, A1, A2, up to AM, and we want to know how many elements there are in the Cartesian product, A1 times A2 up to AM. Uh, the way we form the Cartesian product is by uh, selecting an element and uh, the Cartesian product uh, is an M tuple the ith elements uh, uh, the ith elements in the uh, the, the M tuple uh, is in the uh, ith set they then uh, applying the uh, product rule the number of elements in the Cartesian product uh, of the sets A1 to AM is equal to, take the cardinality of A1, and how many elements in A1, times the cardinality of A2, uh, you multiply the cardinality of each of the sets from A1 to AM. <coughs> uh, next we would like to uh, consider the sum rule. Uh, the sum rule states that if a task can be done in either one of n one ways or in one of n two ways. And now the two different uh, ways uh, must be disjoint, uh, meaning in uh, none of the uh, set of n one ways is the same of uh, as any of the n two ways, uh, these are two disjoint sets. Then there is n one plus n two ways to do the task. Uh, we will look at an example to uh, how to apply the sum rule. Uh, the mathemati uh, mathematics department must choose either a student or a faculty member as a representative for a university committee. Uh, we want to select one person. He can be either a student or he could be a faculty member. We want to know how many choices are there for this uh, selection. If there is 37 members of the mathematics faculty and 83 mathematics major, and you have 80, uh, you have 37 uh, teachers, faculty members, and you have 83 ma uh, mathematics students. And no one is both a faculty member and a student, meaning the set of faculty members is dis disjoint from the set of students. Uh, this, of course, we can apply the uh, sum rule because there is 37 ways to select a faculty member and there is 83 ways to select a student so the number of ways you can select a representative is 37 plus 83, which is equal to 120 possible ways to pick a representative. Now, these rules, uh, uh, as, as it is the case with many of the counting rules, can be expressed in terms of sets. Sometimes the rules are easier to understand if we think of them as rules applying to sets. Uh, the uh, sum rule in terms of sets can be stated as follows. Uh, the number of elements in the union of two sets, and the number of elements in A union B, is equal to the number of elements of A plus the number of elements of B. That is, of course, provided that A and B are disjoint sets. They have nothing in common. 
That rule can be generalized to any finite number of sets. Uh, the number of elements in the union of A1, union A2, up to AM, is equal to the sum of the number of elements in each set. And the condition here, of course, that uh, 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 and if you take any two sets, those two sets would be disjoint. They have nothing in common. Uh, now, uh, if you are trying to count the uh, uh, number of elements in the union of sets, and this condition is not satisfied, uh, and meaning that some of the sets uh, might have something in common, uh, that uh, is a, you know, takes a different way to count in this case. We will cover it in the next chapter. Uh, now, so far we have two rules, the sum and the product rules. They can be uh, combined uh, in one pr counting problem. You may apply both rules at the same time. Uh, here is an example. Suppose that uh, statement labels in a programming language, the uh, programming language or some programming language uses labels. And there is uh, normally rules for any uh, to make labels or to use labels. But in this case, we want uh, uh, the, the label to be either a single letter or a letter followed by a digit. And you have a choice. Your label can be a single letter or it can be uh, a letter followed by a digit. Uh, f uh, we want to know how many possible uh, labels we can form. Uh, first of all, uh, Yanni, uh, if you use only a single letter, you have 26 choices. Uh, but there is 26 ways to select a label that has a single letter. Uh, how many ways can we select a label that has a letter followed by a digit? Well, here you apply the product rule. Uh, you have 26 uh, choices for the letter and 10 choices for the digit. But you have 26 times 10 ways to select a label that is a letter followed by a digit. Now we apply the sum rule. We add the number of ways of selecting a label or the number of labels that have a single letter is 26. The number of labels that have a letter followed by a digit is 26 times 10. Uh, the sum should be 286. And then there's 286 labels you can form following the restrictions. In the next example, we would like to see how we can count passwords. Uh, suppose that uh, we have a computer system that requires a password. Uh, the, there are, of course, uh, restrictions on the passwords, and that affects the way that we count them. Uh, each password must be six to eight characters long. Uh, of course, a, cal a character can be uh, either an uppercase letter or it can be a digit. Uh, each password must contain at least one digit. Uh, we want to know how many possible passwords are there. Now remember, uh, whenever you are uh, attempting to solve accounting problems, uh, it is the conditions that you have to pay attention to, the restrictions. Uh, because that will uh, affect the uh, uh, way that you can count. Uh, here again, the password must be from six to eight characters long. Each character is either an uppercase letter or it is a digit. Uh, the uh, next uh, restriction is that each password must contain at least one digit. Uh, we want to know how many possible passwords are there. Uh, uh, let's start by denoting uh, let P be the total number of passwords. Uh, let uh, P6, P7, and P8 be the following. Yani P6 is the number of passwords of length 6. P7 is the number of passwords of length, length 7. And P8 is the number of passwords of length 8. 
P, the total number of passwords, is equal to P6 plus P7 plus P8. Yeah, and we want to count uh, P6 and P7 and P8. Uh, the sum rule now will, uh, by adding those three numbers, you get the total number of possible passwords. Uh, let's start with P6. Uh, P6 now have six characters, any yani six slots to fill. Uh, uh, yani if there is no restriction, uh, and remember one of the restrictions, there has to be at least one digits. If there was no restriction, the number of six character passwords is 36 multiplied by itself six times, so there will be 36 to the power six. But remember, we cannot allow uh, passwords that are all, all uh, letters. For, and we have to exclude all the uh, passwords that are all letters. And there's how many of these? There's 26 to the power 6. Uh, this is the number of pa passwords that are all letters. But then the total number of passwords that are 6 characters long, and they must have at least one digit, there'll be 36 to the power 6 minus 26 to the power 6. That comes to 1 billion. 867 million uh, 866,560 passwords. Uh, we will count now P7 uh, using similar arguments. Uh, th these are the passwords of length uh, seven characters long. Uh, we take 36 to the power of 7. This is the number of all passwords of length seven minus the number of character uh, number of passwords that is all numbers, and that will come to seventy billion three hundred and thirty two million three hundred fifty three thousand nine hundred and twenty passwords. Uh, P eight is you know, the number of passwords that are eight characters long, is uh, you know, counted similarly. It will be thirty six to the power eight minus 26 to the power 8 uh, and we get uh, that uh, very large number. Uh, now we are ready to count all the numbers, uh, all the passwords uh, follow, uh, that uh, applies to, uh, after applying all the conditions that we have the numbers uh, of password will be P6 plus P7 plus P8 uh, and uh, we get a very large number uh, which you can see uh, in the slide. Uh, next, we would like to count internet addresses. Uh, this is the uh, old uh, protocol version 4, Internet Protocol 4. Uh, and here are the conditions. Uh, the uh, this protocol uses 32 bits I and mean, there's 32 slots to fill and bits uh, I any mean, number is that's either 0 or 1 uh, there are several uh, classes in this protocol they all share w uh, one condition is that there are 32 uh, bit bits I and mean, there is 32 digits uh, we would like to count at least some of these classes. Uh, yeah, and, uh, this table here shows the conditions for each class. Starting with class A, this is used for the largest network. It has to start with zero. Then it is followed by a seven bit net ID and then a 24 bit host ID. And th there is three parts. The first part is zero, just one digit, which start with zero. Then uh, next you have the net ID. For class A, the net ID is seven bits. And then the third part is the host ID, which is 24 bits in class A. Uh, class B, this is used for medium-sized network. It starts with one zero, and the first two digits are one zero followed by a 14-bit 
net ID and then 16-bit host ID. Uh, third, for class C, uh, this is used for the smallest network. It starts with uh, digits 110, then a 21-bit net ID, and then 8-bit host ID. Uh, now, uh, classes D and E uh, these are not assigned as addresses of the computers on the internet, so we will not be counting them. We will only count uh, classes A, B, and C. I mean, we want to know all possible IDs, uh, and internet IDs, net, uh, and net IDs. Uh, for here, uh, and we apply the sum rule. Uh, we will add the three different classes to get a set of all possible uh, internet addresses. Now there is still more more restrictions. Uh, the uh, for example we cannot for a net ID uh, in class A you cannot use a net ID that's all once I and mean, that has to be excluded uh, from class A. Uh, also another uh, restriction host ID is consisting of all zeros uh, and uh, host IDs that are consisting of all ones are not available in any networks. And you cannot use a host ID that's all zeros. You cannot use a host IDs that's all ones. Uh, and this is not available in any network. Uh, let's see if we can count each class and then uh, and add them up to get the total number of internet addresses under uh, version 4 of the internet protocol. Uh, next example we will be counting internet addresses. Uh, this is under the protocol IP version 4. We want to see how many possible addresses uh, we can use in this protocol. And we will be applying both the sum and product rule. Uh, if X is the number of all possible addresses, uh, this will be the sum of different classes of addresses. There is three classes that we'll be counting. Uh, uh, we will count the number of addresses in class A, class B, and class C, and then add them together to get the total number of addresses in this protocol. For class A, uh, we count the net, the number of net IDs, and the number of host IDs and multiply the two numbers to get the possible addresses in this class. For net ID, uh, a net ID must be seven digits. Uh, the numbers is uh, two to the seven, then each digit you can either select zero or one. So there's two to the seven uh, net IDs minus one because we there's a one uh, address that we cannot use, which is uh, all ones. Uh, then the number of possible net IDs is 127. For host IDs, host IDs are 24 digits. But the number of uh, host IDs is 2 to the 24, minus 2 because there's two restricted uh, addresses or two restricted host IDs. You cannot use a host ID that's all ones or a host ID that's all zeros. But then the total number will be uh, 16 million. 777,214. Uh, uh, the number of addresses in class A is a product of these two numbers. Uh, you should get uh, 2,130,706,178. Uh, different addresses in class A. Uh, for class B, the number of net IDs, there is 14 digits for a net ID. So the number of net IDs is 2 to the 14, which is 16,384 net ID. For host IDs, you have 16 digits with two host IDs that are not allowed, but the number of host IDs is equal to 2 to the 16 minus 2. And that will give us 16,534 host ID. The number of addresses available in class B is a product of the number of net IDs with the number of host IDs. Uh, you should get uh, 
709,056 different addresses in class B. Uh, for class C, the number of IDs, since the net ID in class C is 16 digits, number of net IDs is 2 to the 21, uh, which is 2,097,152 net ID. The number of host IDs, remember there's 8 digits in the host ID in class C, minus the two restricted uh, host IDs, so we have 2 to the 8 minus 2, or 254 host ID in class C. The number of addresses is a product of the number of net IDs with the number of host IDs. Uh, we should get 532,676,608 different addresses in class C. Now the total number of available addresses in the IP version 4 is the sum of those three numbers uh, and we should get uh, 3,737,091,816 uh, addresses uh, yani this is the total of the three different classes these are the addresses available in version 4 of the internet protocol Uh, now we would like to take a look at uh, another counting principle uh, called the subtraction rule. Uh, if a task can be done in either one of n1 ways or in one of n2 ways, then the total number of ways to do the task is n1 plus n2 minus the number of ways to do the task that are common to the two different ways. Uh, and in this case, the two different uh, ways to do the task are not disjoint. Uh, you can also you know, think of it in terms of sets. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, to count the number of elements in the union of two sets, if they are not disjoint, take the number of elements of A plus the number of elements of B minus the number of elements in the intersection. So and the reason for that is since the two sets are not disjoint, by adding the number of elements of A plus the number of elements of B, the elements that are in the intersection were counted twice. That's why you have to subtract the number of uh, elements that is in the intersection. Uh, this is, Taban, uh, yani as far as counting, we call it the subtraction rule. Uh, it is also known as the principle of inclusion and exclusion. Uh, this is uh, yani a formula that's also used for sets. Uh, let's look at an example uh, where we can apply the uh, subtraction rule. Uh, we want to count bit strings and with conditions uh, that will uh, yani, uh, make it uh, yani, uh, where we have to use the subtraction rule. So we want to know how many bit strings of length 8 that either start with 1 or end with the two bits 0, 0. Uh, taban, yani it's easy to count the number of bit strings that are of length 8, uh, but we will only want to count uh, those which start with, with uh, yani that have to start with 1 or they have to end with 0, 0. Taban uh, here, yani, if you count all the number of bit strings of length 8 that start with 1 and then count the number of bit strings that end with 0, 0, uh, yani, if you add them together, uh, you can apply the subtraction rule. Uh, you have to exclude or you have to subtract the number of bit strings that are both start with 1 and end with 0, 0. The first, let's count the number of bit strings of length 8 that start with 1. Uh, remember now, you have 8, uh, yani these numbers have 8 uh, characters, yani 8 slots to fill, but we are counting the number of bit strings that start with 1. So there's only 7 slots to fill for the number of uh, bit strings that start with 1 is 2 to the 7, or 128 bit strings. 
Now let's count the number of bit strings that end with 00. zero. Uh, here, uh, come on, the last two digits are occupied, they're 00. zero. So there's only six digits to fill. So you have two to the six, or 64 ways, or any you know, ways of selecting uh, bit strings that end with 00. zero. Uh, there's one more thing to count is the number of uh, bit strings that satisfy both conditions and yani they start with one and end with zero zero in this case of course the first digit is occupied the last two digits are occupied there is only five slots to fill so that there's two to the five or 32 uh, bit strings that start with one and end with zero zero uh, now we're ready to apply the subtraction rule uh, when we add the number of bit strings that start with one plus the number of bit strings that ends with zero zero subtract the number of bit strings that start with one and ends with zero zero yani 128 plus 64 minus 32 you get 160 bit strings that either start with one or ends with zero zero. Next we would like to consider the division rule. The division rule states that there are n over d ways to do a task if it can be done using a procedure that can be carried out in n ways. And for every way w, exactly d of the n ways corresponds to way w. Uh, the rule, yeah, you might be uh, explained also using sets. Uh, suppose you have a partition of a set A, yeah, and A is a union of n pairwise disjoint subsets, uh, each with d elements. Yeah, and each subset uh, has d elements, and you, uh, A is a union of those n pairwise disjoint sets. Then n which is the number of sets, is equal to the total number of elements in A divided by D. D uh, is the number of elements in each subset. And the number of sets in the partition is equal to the total number of elements divided by how many elements in each subset. In terms of functions, if you have a function from A to B, uh, both sets are finite. Suppose that for every Y in B, there is exactly d values x and a such that f of x is equal to y uh, and that means in every y in the codomain has uh, uh, yani, uh, d values, yani d different values in the domain a that is mapped to y. Okay, then the number of elements in b is equal to the number of elements in a divided by d. Uh, let's look at an example to demonstrate the division rule. We want to know how many ways are there to seat four people around a circular table where two seatings are considered the same when each person has the same left and right neighbor. Uh, the way we want to do this is first we would like to count the number of linear arrangements. Can you, uh, if the four chairs are uh, placed in one line, this is called the linear arrangement. We count the number of linear arrangements, and then we will see in every four uh, linear ar arrangements corresponds to one circular arrangement. So, uh, you know, uh, we can divide the number of linear arrangements by four, and that will give us the number of circular arrangements. Uh, now, for linear arrangements, just think of the chairs in one line and numbered from 1 to 4. Uh, there is four different ways to select a person for seat number 1. Uh, there is three different, way, uh, different people to choose for seat number 2, two people to, for seat number 3, and one person for seat number 4. For the no number of linear arrangement by the product rule is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24. Now every four linear arrangements corresponds to one circular arrangement because uh, any two linear arrangements will be considered the same 
because when, when you form them in a linear or, or in a circular arrangement, uh, two arrangements will be the same if you have the same left uh, and right neighbor. Okay, then the number of circular arrangements is equal to the total number of linear arrangements, which is 24, divided by 4. We, we have six different seating arrangements. Uh, next, we would like to uh, consider three diagrams and how they can be used to, uh, for, to solve counting problems. There are many actually counting problems uh, you can solve using three diagrams. Uh, a tree is just a graph. Uh, those dots are called vertices and uh, each edge, uh, an edge is a branch that connects two vertices. Uh, and what you want to do is uh, uh, you draw a branch for each possible choice uh, and then you can actually count by counting the uh, those lowest vertices are called leaves by counting the leaves that will give you the number of possible choices uh, let's demonstrate that uh, using a, a counting problem uh, here we have a t-shirt any uh, store that uh, stock t-shirts that come in five different sizes small medium large x large and xx large each size come in different colors the one we have uh, small medium and large come in four different colors white red green and black the size uh, x large come only in two colors uh, uh, three colors red green and black and the size XX large come in only in two colors, green and black. So how do we draw a tree and then count the number? Of, uh, what we want to know, know is how many, uh, the minimum number of t-shirts that uh, the store must uh, keep so that they have one of each size and each color available. So to do this, by starting from the root, we will uh, draw uh, five branches and you start our uh, by drawing five vertices representing the different sizes so you have a vertex for small medium large x large and x x large and then draw branches uh, from the root to each of these vertices representing the different sizes now each size come in different colors so for each size, draw the branches for each available color for that size. Yani methan for small, for medium, for large, they all come in four colors: uh, white, red, green, and black. So draw a branch for each available color for each size. And you have four for small, four for medium, four for large. For X large, you want to draw three branches these are the available colors red green and black and for the final uh, yani vertex xx large you draw two branches representing uh, green and black and now to count the number of the minimum number of t-shirts that the store must keep so that they have one of each size and color available count the leaves count the vertices the lowest uh, yani the, the lowest uh, vertices are called the leaves count these and that will give you the number of uh, the minimum number of t-shirts that we need if, uh, if you count these uh, leaves uh, there is uh, 17 different uh, leaves uh, so then we have 17 different uh, yani we need 17 different t-shirts so that we have every size is available and every color is available Next, we would like to consider a formula for the number of permutation. A permutation is an arrangement. So if you uh, have a set that has n element, distinct elements, n is a positive integer, and r is an integer greater than or equal to 1 and less than n. Uh, the uh, number of arrangements or permutations, and we are arranging r, objects out of the n objects 
uh, if you think about it يعني, that you have R slots to fill for the first slot you have N choices because your, your set has N objects and you are arranging R objects for the first slot has N possibilities to choose from the second slot has n minus 1 choices the third slot is n minus 2 the final slot the uh, rth slot you have n minus r plus 1 uh, uh, objects to select from uh, this formula pnr uh, simply is the number of permit r permutations out of the n objects it's equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 the uh, last number you multiply is n minus r plus 1. Uh, these are called r permutations out of a set with n distinct element. Uh, the special case uh, is pn0. You here you are arranging 0 elements out of the n elements. There is only one way uh, to order 0 elements. Uh, an uh, another way to write the same formula for the number of r permutations P of n r uh, is equal uh, to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. This is you know, one way to calculate the number of r permutations out of an, an, uh, a set that has n distinct objects. Uh, let's see an example to apply the formula. We want to know how many ways are there to select a uh, first prize winner a second prize winner and a third prize winner from 100 different people who have entered the contest. But here you are actually uh, uh, arranging three out of 100 different people. This is an arrangement uh, because it's not just selecting three people out of the 100 but you have to arrange who will be the first prize winner, who will be the second prize winner, who will be the third prize winner. So this is actually uh, a three permutation out of the 100 different people involved in the contest. For this is uh, then applying the formula, this is P of 100, 3, and he, this is uh, the number of three permutations out of the 100. But this is 100 times 99 times 98. Uh, there is 970,200 different ways to select the three different winners. Uh, here is uh, another uh, example of a permutation. Uh, we want to know, uh, suppose you have a saleswoman that ha has to visit eight different cities. Uh, we must begin, uh, she must begin her trip in a specified city. Uh, but then the order in which she can uh, yani visit the remaining seven cities is a permutation. Yani we are selecting uh, yani a seven uh, permutation uh, out of the uh, uh, the seven. Of course, the first city is already selected, but we are counting the number of seven permutations out of the remaining seven cities. Uh, this will be taban. Uh, 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 p n of n or p of seven of seven and the number of arrangements of the seven cities out of the seven available cities this will be seven factorial seven times six times five times four times three times two times one which is equal to five thousand forty any uh, seven factorial uh, there is uh, that many uh, different ways that you can visit the remaining seven cities Uh, here is another problem, uh, any permutation problem. Uh, how many permutation of the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H contain the string A, B, C? Uh, uh, here uh, you only want to count the uh, letter, uh, any the words. Uh, a permutation in this case will be, you can think of it as a word, uh, but you, on, you only want to count the letters or the uh, permutation that has the string ABC. Uh, one way to do this 
is to solve this problem by counting the permutation and you think of ABC as one object so this is actually an arrangement or a permutation of the six objects the first one is ABC then D E F G and H so this is a number of permutations of six objects this is six factorial or 720 Of course, with a permutation, arrangements or the order is important. Uh, with a combination, uh, yani order is not important. It's just selecting uh, yani, uh, a number of objects. But here, the order is not important. For an R combination of elements is an unordered selection of R elements from the set. Here, order is not important. For an R combination is simply a subset of the set with R elements. Any subset of the original set is considered to be a combination or a selection. The, the formula for R combinations of a set with N distinct elements uh, we use capital C uh, N comma R. Uh, yani you can read this as N choose R. You're selecting R elements out of the N objects and again this is a combination uh, or a selection where order is not important. Uh, the notation that we use, yani we include uh, uh, n, uh, uh, n in a bracket, n, and below, right below it we write r. For this denotes the same thing, yani c, n, r, or this is uh, n choose r. Uh, this is uh, also called the binomial coefficients. Uh, there is a formula to count the number of R uh, combinations out of the N objects. Uh, taban, we can demonstrate taban, that uh, this should also show the difference between a permutation and a combination. For, for example, if you have the set A, B, C, D, uh, then uh, A, C, D is a three combination from S. You're selecting three elements from the original set that has four elements. So this is a three combination of S. Uh, here, just to demonstrate where, uh, what we mean by order is not important, uh, this uh, three combination ACD is the same uh, th as the three combination DCA. Yeah, and if we just reorder the uh, objects, this is not a different selection. Uh, think of it as a subset, yeah, and with a subset uh, the order of objects is not important for a combination, a three combination uh, from a set that has four elements is just a subset that has three elements. Uh, now if you want to count all possible uh, selections you can actually list them for C42 meaning we are selecting two elements out of a set that has four elements. There is six different ways to do this. Uh, if you want to list them uh, starting yani, from the set that has the letters A, B, C, D, you can actually list all the combinations, the two combinations, yani, all the subsets that have two elements. Uh, you can take A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D. These are all the subsets, this, these are all the two combinations out of the original set that has four elements. Uh, of course we would like to have a formula to calculate the number of combinations and that's what we'll do next. The formula to uh, count the number of R combinations uh, out of a set with N elements so when R is less than or equal to N and greater than or equal to 0. Uh, C N R, you need the number of R combinations of a set that has N element is equal to N factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. Let, uh, we will see an example of using or counting combinations. Uh, the example here, how many poker hands of five cards can be dealt from a standard deck of 52 cards? Yani we have yani the regular deck has 52 cards for how many ways can we select five cards out of the 52 cards? Uh, another uh, thing we would like to do is to see how many ways 
you can select 47 car cards from the same deck of 52 cards. For here, uh, uh, as we said, and here this is a combination. For you, uh, the order is not important. You just want to see how many different ways to select five cards out of the 52 cards. But this is a combination problem. For C525 is equal to 52 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by the difference which is 47 factorial. Uh, you can of course uh, uh, make the calculation or you can even use your calculator to evaluate uh, factorials. Uh, you should get uh, 2,598,960 different ways of selecting 5 cards out of the 52 cards. Now what about uh, the number of ways of selecting 47 out of the 52? This is uh, C52, 47, meant a select number of ways of selecting 47 cars out of the 52. So it's 52 factorial divided by 47 factorial times the difference, which is 5 factorial. Uh, this will turn out to be the same thing as C52, 5. Uh, it will be 2,598,960. And if you look at the formula, uh, yani it will be easy to see why uh, the number of ways of selecting five cards out of 52 is the same number of ways of selecting 47 out of the 52. And the 5 plus 47 gives you 52. Uh, here are more uh, combination problems. Uh, example, uh, the first example, how many ways are there to select five players from a ten-member tennis team to make a trip at a match at another school? And you're selecting five players from uh, the ten players. The order is not important. So this is a combination problem. Uh, applying you know, the formula for combinations, we are uh, you know, calculating C of 10, comma 5, yani the number of 5 combinations or fi 5 selections out of the 10. This is 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial times the difference, which is 5 factorial. Uh, this should be 252 ways. Another example uh, using the formula for combinations. We have a group of 30 people have been trained as astronauts to go to the first mission to Mars. Uh, we want to know how many ways are there to select a crew of six people out of the 30 uh, people to go on this mission. Uh, using the formula for combinations, this is C30, comma 6, and the number of six combinations out of the 30. This is 30 factorial divided by 6 factorial times the difference, which is 24 factorial. Uh, this should come to 593,775 different ways.